Okay, so this weekend I tried to get started on the uh, workflow that integrates TypeScript with Unreal that I'm hoping to work with in the future. Um, so it's built on top of the Unreal JS plugin, which is community maintained. And uh, it's okay. It's, uh, it's It could be cleaned up a bit and expanded uh, quite a bit, but it uh, I think it will. it's good enough to continue. So... Um, Anyways, so as you can see here, I basically have a pretty much an empty project. And if you look over here in this TypeScript file, I've just defined simply some uh, locations, some characters, which just have a location basically, and one of them is marked as player controlled. And then some specific markers within those locations, which are like specific points that characters can spawn at or, or things like that. And um, it's a nice thing. This is all... Uh, TypeScript, so even the strings, for example, uh, are checked by the compiler. So if we made a typo here for the location, we'd immediately, you know, get an error here. And we get auto-completion, so you have to choose a valid location, even though it's just a string for the player. Um, and then, like, the uh, marker that he's going to spawn at, that's a an enum. So those are compiler-checked as well. And then like these transitions, so we, the beach location has the markers that are we've called for the beach, and then has transitions available, and even it's just a string array, but again, if we made a typo here and said, um, the compiler would say, hey, I don't know where you're trying to transition to, because it knows that it needs to match one of these uh, strings here. So I'll we'll transition to the forest. Um, and we have live recompilation going, so as soon as I save that, the changes are updated. Okay, so we can use this now, these sort of uh, locations and markers and characters we define to initialize our project here in Unreal. So if we just run this command, require editor dot initialize, give it a few seconds, and it's done. And now if we go back into our content browser, we see we have a map or a level that was created for each of those locations that we defined in the code here and so like let's open up the beach and if we look around the beach we see oops, we see a few things have been placed here automatically so these are the markers uh like the points that things can we can refer to uh so this is like the player start location so if we want to move that around uh this happens to me a lot of times where the uh, snapping on the terrain breaks and I have to run this command. Okay, so now we can presumably drag stuff along the ground again. Okay, so let's put our player start location over there. Here's another. This is the crew member start location, which, I mean, I haven't fleshed out these characters very much, but this would be like his, another person who's on your, uh, the idea was they're going to be on a ship together or something. And then this is the sort of gateway uh, to the forest. Uh, so as soon as you step inside the sphere, then it would load the forest level. So if you think in terms of like a point-and-click adventure game or something like that, and it's a small area that transitions to another. Um, so we'll move that uh, over here. But to make it clear, we should probably put a tree by it or something so that it's you'll see where you need to stand by to go to the forest. So put this tree here. And then while we're at it, let's go ahead and make the beach... Uh, look a bit more like a beach. So if we switch to landscape mode and uh, paint and go down here and add a paint layer for the beach and choose the beach and paint some sand. Okay, that's fine. And then, uh, let's save our changes there. And uh, so we want to uh, transition to the forest level when we walk by the tree. So if we go ahead and open the forest here, we'll see again that it was kind of initialized. It doesn't have as much in the beach in it. All it has is one marker that we defined for the tribe leader, and we have him set to spawn there. So we can, uh, well, first let's put some trees around the forest. so the places don't all look the same. 
Okay. I like that one. Okay. So we got our forest. And now uh, we need a place when we transition. We have a place for the tribe leader to spawn, but we don't have a place for the player when he enters the forest. And so what we can do is uh, if we go back to our code here, it's pretty simple. If we go to our forest markers here, and let's just add another one, um, we'll call it a forest entrance. Oops. Entrance. And then, so we have this action that we started to find. So defining an action is pretty simple. It's basically just a string label, and then it's a function which takes in an object representing all this, and you can do whatever you want to it. You just modify it however you want. And uh, it's all, uh, you know, type checked and stuff. So we just take our state, and we can say, well, let's get the player and get his location. And again, even though it's a string, it's compiler type checked here. So we'll move him to the forest level. When he enters, this is this is the action that's triggered when you walk into that uh, sphere we have in the beach, and then specifically in the forest where we're going to put you, is uh, this new marker we just defined up there. So we save it. The code recompiles, um, and again, since we added these things here, we can automatically have the editor reinitialize those for us. Unfortunately, with this JavaScript stuff uh, for the editor things, I have to I haven't figured out how to do it without restarting the editor. Otherwise, it's not going to reload the uh, the library to initialize it. So we do need to do a quick restart just when we're changing um, stuff that we want the editor to sort of create new levels or modify levels. If we're just changing gameplay logic and, and things like that, we don't need to restart uh, anything that just depends on when you press play. Uh, we don't need to restart the editor, but for if we modify the script that runs while we're in edit mode right now, at least I do have to restart the editor. So now if we run this command again, uh, editor initialize, it's not going to erase any of the changes we already made. So for example, if we go back to our beach, we can see it looks exactly how we left it. We didn't change anything there, but if we go to our forest, it mostly looks exactly how we left it, but we now see we have a new marker here because it saw that we had added something. Um, so this is the forest entrance one. And so we'll go ahead and move this a bit farther away. So this way, when we, uh, when we actually go to the forest, it's now going to place us here because um, we need it. Otherwise, we didn't have a place inside of that level to refer to other than where the tribe leader was already spawning. So now let's go back to the beach and let's go ahead and play. Okay, and so now if we go ahead and hit play, it initializes the rest of the stuff, so it puts the characters where we told them to be. So we have our player here, we have a crew member here, and now if we run over by the tree, it will load the forest level. Now we're in the forest at the marker that we placed down there. And if we run over into the trees here, we see the uh, it spawned the tribe leader. Um, like we wanted. So this was just a quick start to try to demonstrate the workflow I'm trying to uh, head towards where I can sort of quickly jump back and forth between doing a sort of high level non-performance intensive uh, game logic changes like updating spawn locations or updating dialogue choices and stuff like that here in TypeScript with lots of compiler support and hot reloading uh, very quick iterations. But then back in Unreal, I can still you know, define all my blueprints and take advantage of all the editor features for editing animations and um, materials and uh, things like that and uh, wire those together uh, pretty easily. So that's what I'm working on.